That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. On July 16, 1969, the world watched in awe as the massive Saturn V rocket stood poised on the launch pad at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The culmination of years of intense work by thousands of scientists, engineers, and astronauts, Apollo 11 was about to embark on humanity's boldest journey yet. At 9.32 a.m., EDT, with a thunderous roar and a blinding flash, the rocket lifted off, carrying the astronauts into history. But how did this remarkable mission become reality, and what impact did it have on the world we live in today? Welcome back to Compelling History. Today we'll be continuing our four-episode series on flashpoints throughout history with one small step that changed our world forever. Before we get our first real six string and head back to the summer of 69, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes. We'll link last week's video covering the Boston Tea Party below in case you missed it. On October 4, 1957, the Soviet Union stunned the world by launching Sputnik 1, the first artificial satellite to orbit Earth. This metallic sphere with its beeping radio signals did more than circle the planet. It orbited into the hearts and minds of Americans, instilling both awe and fear. The space race had begun. The space race was a 20th century competition between the United States and the Soviet Union to achieve superior spaceflight capability. Its origins lay in the ballistic missile-based nuclear arms race following World War II. The rivalry peaked with the moon race, aiming to land a human on the moon. In the late 1950s, the United States was locked in the Cold War with the Soviet Union. This was an era marked by intense rivalry, where technological prowess was a measure of national superiority. Although both countries had experimented with small liquid fuel rockets before World War II, Launching satellites and humans into space required the development of larger ballistic missiles. The Sputnik launch highlighted a gap in American capabilities, igniting concerns over national security and technological leadership. If the Soviets could launch a satellite, could they not also launch intercontinental ballistic missiles? President Dwight D. Eisenhower, recognizing the urgent need to respond, accelerated the development of America's own satellite projects. Despite early setbacks, such as the ill-fated Vanguard TV-3, which exploded shortly after launch, perseverance paid off. On January 31, 1958, the United States successfully launched Explorer 1, its first satellite. Public interest in spaceflight was first aroused in October 1951, when Soviet rocketry engineer Mikhail Tikhonravov published Flight to the Moon. This early vision set the stage for the space race. Meanwhile, both the U.S. and USSR had acquired German rocket development assets post-World War II, leveraging these to develop their own missiles. However, the true turning point came with the election of John F. Kennedy in 1960. Kennedy was a charismatic leader who understood the power of symbolic victories. Initially lukewarm about the space program, Kennedy's perspective shifted dramatically following Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin's historic flight on April 12, 1961 which made him the first human to journey into space and orbit the Earth. This achievement by the USSR further spurred the United States to action. Just over a month later, on May 25, 1961, Kennedy addressed a joint session of Congress. With steely determination, he laid out an audacious vision. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. This declaration marked the birth of the Apollo program. Kennedy's decision was also influenced by the recent failure of the Bay of Pigs invasion, prompting him to seek a bold initiative to restore national pride. His administration consulted experts, including Werner von Braun, who emphasized the feasibility of a lunar mission given sufficient commitment and resources. The Apollo program was not just about landing a man on the moon, it was about surpassing Soviet achievements and showcasing American technological prowess. The task was monumental, requiring advancements in science, engineering, and human endurance. NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration formed in 1958, became the central hub for this ambitious endeavor. Dr. Werner von Braun, a former German rocket scientist, played a crucial role in developing the Saturn V rocket, the behemoth that would eventually carry astronauts to the moon. His expertise and leadership were instrumental in overcoming the technical challenges that lay ahead. 
The Saturn V's development was pivotal as it provided the necessary thrust to achieve lunar missions. NASA's early manned spaceflight programs, Mercury and Gemini, served as critical stepping stones. Project Mercury aimed to put an American astronaut in space and test human capabilities in microgravity. On February 20, 1962, John Glenn became the first American to orbit Earth, a moment of immense pride for the nation. Following Mercury, the Gemini program focused on developing the skills necessary for a lunar mission. It included rendezvous and docking procedures, spacewalks, and long-duration flights. Astronauts like Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins honed their skills during these missions, setting the stage for the ultimate goal. Tragedy struck on January 27, 1967, when a fire during a pre-launch test of Apollo 1 claimed the lives of astronauts Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger B. Chaffee. This devastating incident underscored the immense risks involved and led to significant design and safety improvements. Undeterred, NASA pressed on. The successful flights of Apollo 7 and Apollo 8, which saw the first manned orbit of the moon in December 1968, reaffirmed the program's momentum. Each mission brought the United States closer to achieving Kennedy's bold vision. By the summer of 1969, the stage was set. The technology was ready, the astronauts were trained, and the world held its breath. The United States was on the cusp of a momentous achievement that would forever change the course of history. Thus, the Apollo program was born out of a fierce competition, visionary leadership, and the indomitable spirit of exploration. It was a journey fueled by the desire to conquer the unknown and to prove once and for all that humanity could reach beyond the confines of Earth and touch the stars. The program's success was a testament to human ingenuity, perseverance, and the relentless pursuit of a dream that began with the launch of a small beeping satellite and culminated in the giant leap of setting foot on the moon. And it's just five minutes uh, to the historic launch of the Apollo 11 with all going well. Astronauts Armstrong, Collins, and Aldrin sitting there atop the uh, great Saturn rocket in their command module getting ready for launch. On July 16, 1969, the world watched in awe as the massive Saturn V rocket stood poised on the launch pad at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The culmination of years of intense work by thousands of scientists, engineers, and astronauts, Apollo 11 was about to embark on humanity's boldest journey yet, landing a man on the moon. This momentous mission was led by Commander Neil Armstrong, Lunar Module Pilot Edwin Buzz Aldrin, and Command Module Pilot Michael Collins. Originally, Jim Lovell was slated to be the Command Module Pilot, but due to medical issues he was replaced by Collins, who recovered from his surgery just in time. At 9.32 a.m., EDT, with a thunderous roar and a blinding flash, the rocket lifted off, carrying the astronauts into history. Ten, nine, ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Apollo 11 was the second American mission where all the crew members had prior spaceflight experience following Apollo 10. For three days, Apollo 11 hurtled through the vacuum of space, a voyage marked by meticulous navigation and constant monitoring by mission control in Houston. Inside the cramped command module Columbia, the astronauts carried out their tasks with precision, maintaining the delicate balance of their spacecraft's trajectory. Conversations between the crew and mission control were calm and methodical, underscoring the gravity of their mission. On July 19th, Apollo 11 entered lunar orbit and the next day, Armstrong and Aldrin transferred to the lunar module Eagle, while Collins remained aboard Columbia. The descent to the lunar surface was fraught with challenges. As Eagle approached its predetermined landing site, Armstrong realized they were heading toward a field of boulders. With only seconds of fuel remaining, he manually piloted the module to a safer spot. At 4.17 p.m. EDT on July 20, 1969, the Eagle touched down in the Sea of Tranquility and Armstrong's calm voice crackled over the radio. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. A wave of relief and jubilation swept through mission control, but the mission was far from over. Six and a half hours later, as millions watched on live television, Armstrong descended the ladder of the lunar module. His boots met the moon's dusty surface, and he uttered the now famous words, That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. 
giant leap for mankind. Aldrin soon joined him and together they conducted experiments, collected rock samples, and took photographs. They planted the American flag and left behind a plaque bearing the inscription, Here men from the planet Earth first set foot upon the moon, July 1969 AD, we came in peace for all mankind. For over two hours, Armstrong and Aldrin worked diligently, their voices conveying a mix of awe and professionalism as they described the alien landscape around them. The low gravity allowed for light, bounding movements, which contrasted with the meticulous scientific tasks they performed. Meanwhile, Collins orbited above, maintaining vigil and ensuring their safe return. Their time on the moon, though groundbreaking, was fleeting. With their samples secured and tasks completed, Armstrong and Aldrin returned to the Eagle, rested briefly, and then prepared for the daunting task of lifting off from the lunar surface. On July 21st, the ascent stage of the Eagle ignited, propelling them back into lunar orbit where Collins awaited in Columbia. Reunited, the trio began their journey home. The return trip was marked by a sense of accomplishment but also vigilance. Any failure at this stage could still result in disaster. The vast void of space seemed both a conquerable frontier and an unforgiving abyss. As they re-entered Earth's atmosphere on July 24th, Apollo 11 endured the fiery re-entry, its heat shield glowing as it protected the astronauts from the intense heat. The command module splashed down safely in the Pacific Ocean southwest of Hawaii, where the crew was retrieved by the USS Hornet. The world exhaled a collective sigh of relief and erupted in celebration. Apollo 11 had achieved the seemingly impossible fulfilling President John F. Kennedy's goals set less than a decade earlier. Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins had not only journeyed to the moon and back, but had also inspired generations to look beyond our planet and dream of new horizons. Their mission, characterized by courage, innovation, and international collaboration, remains a testament to what humanity can achieve when united by a common goal. On July 20, 1969, as Neil Armstrong's boot made contact with the lunar surface, humanity took a giant leap into a new era of exploration. The Apollo 11 mission was a triumph of ingenuity, perseverance, and the collective will of thousands of scientists, engineers, and visionaries. But the story of Apollo 11 did not end with Armstrong's famous words or the safe return of the astronauts. The aftermath of this historic mission reverberated across the globe, transforming space travel, influencing geopolitical dynamics, and igniting imaginations worldwide. As the Apollo 11 command module splashed down safely in the Pacific Ocean on July 24, 1969, the world celebrated. The astronauts, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins were hailed as heroes. Parades and accolades followed, from ticker tape parades in New York City to honorary ceremonies around the world. The mission was a symbol of human potential and ingenuity, showcasing what could be achieved when a nation sets its sights on a seemingly impossible goal. In the United States, the success of Apollo 11 bolstered national pride and reaffirmed the country's technological and scientific leadership during the Cold War. President Richard Nixon, capitalizing on this momentum, emphasized the unity and effort it took to achieve such a feat. His administration leveraged the mission's success to reinforce the narrative of American exceptionalism. Yet the mission also sparked debates on the allocation of resources, with some questioning the billions spent on space exploration amid ongoing social and economic issues. Internationally, the Apollo 11 mission had a profound impact. It was a statement of peaceful exploration during a time of intense geopolitical tension. The United States shared lunar samples with scientists from around the world, promoting international cooperation in space research. Soviet Union, while rivaling the U.S. in the space race, acknowledged the mission's achievement, which in turn softened Cold War hostilities, if only briefly. The mission underscored the potential for scientific collaboration beyond political boundaries. The success of Apollo 11 invigorated NASA's space program, leading to subsequent Apollo missions that further explored the lunar surface. Each mission brought back invaluable data and samples, deepening our understanding of the moon and its history. However, the euphoria and momentum eventually faced practical challenges. By the early 1970s, public interest waned and political priorities shifted. Budget constraints and changing public sentiment led to the cancellation of the final planned Apollo missions. Despite these setbacks, Apollo 11's legacy lived on, inspiring the next generation of scientists, engineers, and dreamers. The mission had a lasting impact on technology and culture. Innovations developed for the mission found applications in various fields, from computer technology to material science. 
Moreover, the iconic images of Earth from space fostered a new consciousness about our planet's fragility, contributing to the burgeoning environmental movement. In the realm of space exploration, Apollo 11 set a precedent. It demonstrated that human spaceflight was not only possible, but also repeatable. This paved the way for the Space Shuttle program, the International Space Station ISS, and current ambitions to return to the Moon and venture further to Mars. The mission's success instilled confidence in international collaborations like the ISS, a testament to the enduring spirit of exploration that Apollo 11 ignited. Culturally, Apollo 11 left an indelible mark. It was a unifying event, watched by millions across the globe. The phrase, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, became synonymous with human achievement. Literature, films, and art continue to draw inspiration from this seminal moment, exploring themes of exploration, courage, and the quest for knowledge. The aftermath of Apollo 11 was multifaceted, influencing science, technology, politics, and culture. It marked a turning point, proving that humanity could transcend Earth's bounds and venture into the cosmos. The mission's legacy continues to inspire, reminding us of our capacity for greatness and the boundless possibilities that await when we dare to dream and reach for the stars. As we look back on that historic achievement, we are reminded that the spirit of Apollo lives on in every new challenge we embrace, every frontier we explore, and every leap we take towards a better future. Thank you so much for watching our video on the Apollo 11 moon landing. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you drop us a like, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the third video in our four-part series on historical flashpoints the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Comment below what topics you'd like to see explored in future episodes. This channel is not possible without your support making it happen.